brother. Mine's over in Psalms chapter 80, 81. Psalm chapter 81, and it's 8, 9, and 10. Hear, O oh my people. Did you give your scripture? Fire at will. Yes. Good, good. Do you have a, uh, you want to tell us what we're going to do Friday? You're going to try, you're going to try the 637? Okay, so the, we're going to try the men's meeting at 630 instead of 7. 630, okay. Yes? And, uh, the, oh, they're going to have burgers. So, wow. So if you come to the men's meeting this coming Friday, which will be the first Friday of July, you get you a hamburger and then you're going to get you a good hamburger in the spiritual world. So send, send that boy up here, both of them. <laughs> yeah, tell him, come on, we'll feed him a burger. <laughs> Amen. Okay, we're, we're going to be in the book of Ruth. It's going to be the second chapter. We're going to read the first 16 verses of that chapter. And I'm going to give you my scripture. It's Psalms 81, verse number 8, 9, and 10. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if, if I will hearken unto me, uh, that thou have no strange God in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. You talk about a promise from God. So, whoa, man. Our only hope is from the Lord. He said, all you got to do is open your mouth and he'll fill you physically, spiritually, financially, mentally. If we're hunger, the promise was, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you shall be filled. Man, it doesn't matter if you're in the prison system, in the jailhouse, the Scurry County, or if you get to go to church, it don't make no difference. What matters is if you're hungry for God, you will be filled. If you don't want God, if you shun him, it's the same way. I mean, you know, if you don't want it, it won't come. But if you're hungry, to the hunger, the Bible says, every bitter thing is sweet. You're so hungry, you can't hardly wait to get some of it. Oh, brother, I will never get this. I don't know why it stuck in my mind so good, but brother uh, Clinton was preaching uh, in Lubbock. He was preaching one of our camp meetings, and uh, he said, uh, what happens when you start fasting is, what starts the fast is you're hungry for God. And as, as you fast, you, you get hungry for food. And you're, and you're telling your body, I'm, I'm waiting to eat. And he said, if you go, you know, three or four days or something without eating, he said, something happens to your mind. You, you start looking around and an Irish potato, a cold Irish potato on the back porch in Amarillo that's almost froze, look like a T-bone steak. <laughs> Because you want it so bad. And what, what, you, what he's showing, you, what he was talking about was if you're that hungry for God, if you want God like that, I mean, instead of picking at everything that comes by, I mean, you just dive in there and just get full of, of, the, of the Lord. It just, and that right there, that kind of hunger is what, is what keeps you full. You want it. You want God so bad, you just, you're going for it. If you don't want it, it'll never happen. Because he's not going to push himself off on you. But if you want him, woo, you start seeking God. And all of a sudden, I mean, the praises go up. The glory comes down. Woo. <laughs> In the midst of his praise, sweet victory is found. Mm -mm. Okay, have we got a reader this evening? We're going to start in verse number uh, one of chapter two of Ruth. We've got a reader. Anybody want to read? Hope you want to, okay, right, right here. You, you want, you had, I see you here. I just, I like to miss you there. Okay, far at will. 16 verses. Ruth chapter 2, verse number 
And Noi, Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go into the field and glean ears of corn, as to him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said again unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her half was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of a little man. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem. Or read. <laughs> <laughs> That'll wait to be on the tape. Okay. And said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide there fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels, and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thy handmaidens. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. Okay. Wonder wonderful passage of Scripture. <coughs> All, all of the scripture, when you begin to look at it and apply it to our lives where we're at right now uh, on Wednesday evening, it, and you recognize that what, what happened then thousands of years ago speaks, speaks to us today because that Boaz is likened unto Christ. And uh, the, the lesson talks about several things that, that made that possible that he he had some likenesses of Christ himself. One of them was that he, whenever he got to the field, he blessed the reapers and the reapers blessed him. We talked about that just a little bit last week. But it's so wonderful to live in a godly environment. When we, when we started uh, day working years ago, the, the cowboy crews were... Uh, Agnostic. I mean, there's cussing all the time, just uh, 
you know, some of them would be from one ranch, some from another, and they wouldn't work together. They, they would work together, but not, I mean, it was like there's always, there's always pulling. There's a strife there all the time. And uh, now, the, the 10 ranches that, that I help, uh, that there's been a unity come. And that, that comes because of the Lord. I mean, some good hands, but because you're not trying to one-up each other all the time, but you're trying to help each other, it, it, took, the, it took the pain out of it. And boy, it, it is such a wonderful thing to, for the environment to change. I know uh, I hear Brother Ross talking all the time about the guys that, that help him, that, that's uh, the prayer warriors and it's been filled with the Holy Ghost there and, and the Christian men. And it's just wonderful after you've been, you know, through some rough stuff to have some of those guys get around you and pray and know uh, it's, it's not uncommon for, uh, for those men now to ride up to me and say, would you pray over, over my need? Would you pray over my marriage? Would you pray over... One of my buddies is sick. I mean, it's, it's a continual deal, and, and it's, it should be like that. Real Christianity should be Christianity anywhere you're at. And, and that's the joy and the difference that's made. Uh, if, if you really know Christ, then it, 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 shows, it shows out. Brother Rosas was telling Connie, he said, man, he, he enjoyed Brother Leatherwood working for him because he said, and Brother Leatherwood was telling me the other day, Brother Leatherwood was telling me the other day, he said, we get to talk about the Lord. <laughs> and it's sweet. It's wonderful. And so to have, have that camaraderie is a precious thing, and it's God intended. He intended for the workplace not to be just full of stress and gouging and kicking and, and stepping on each other's hands, you know, going up the ladder to see who could get there first. But there, there should be some, some uh, they, they, call it, they call it when we was playing ball, they called it sportsmanship. Yeah, that, that means that you thought you thought well of the other team where they lost or won. You tried to be a good sport about it, and that's just about went out the out the uh, deal. You know, everybody spikes the ball for me now, and, and I've done it. And, and what would any of those guys be without the team? You know, helping them really. It's a it's a in our lives uh, without team effort. What where do we go? How, what can we do? Really, if you had just left Naomi and Ruth by themselves, they would have starved to death. Because they don't have the equipment to plant the seed. They don't have the equipment for harvest. Uh, all, all of that. But this, is a, this become, uh, even though it was a small thing in the eyes of Boaz, who's farming a lot of country, uh, it meant everything to Naomi and, and Ruth because they're, they are getting to live. They couldn't eat. They didn't know what they're going to eat today, let alone tomorrow. And so that, that it's brought, it, brought it to a really neat, neat uh, thing here. Now, in, in the lesson today, and I thought this was so precious, he talked about that Naomi, or, or that uh, uh, Boaz l looks her up here uh, in, in verse number, I see, verse number six. The servant that was set over the uh, reapers answered and said, it is the Moabitish damsel. That's verse number six. So what, what he said, he, he sees her, he sees she's different, but he says, I want to know who she is, what she's doing here. And, and then he starts inquiring and, and talking to her. And, and what he, he likens that to is that God, he, know, he knows, he wants to know us. Yeah. Do you remember the scripture in, in Matthew chapter seven, verse number, like, what is it, 22 or 23? I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Well, he wants to know her. Well, the Lord's been reaching out. He's been reaching out for 2,000 years. He wants to know us. He wants to know you. He wants to know the world. One, one of these days, the door will shut. And that's why he didn't say, hey, it's okay to come in. He said, once, once the master of the house, this is Luke chapter 13, once the master of the house has risen up and shut to the door, then will they stand without and knock? Said, Lord, would you open unto us? But the door shut now. It's over. And what he's saying, that dispensation of the Gentile race is finished. It's gone. It's going to be opened up for the Jews for a little bit, but the Gentile deal, it's over. And, and he said, you start knocking. He said, I'm, I'm just going to say, depart from me, you that work in I, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, here's that scripture. I will profess that I never knew them. He wants, to, he wants to make himself known to her where she can know him. There, there's, that, there's that camaraderie uh, that you're not just, uh, just uh, flesh and blood and you're just out there somewhere, but he knows you. He, know, he wants to know your name. He cares about you. Not that he doesn't know who we are, but he wants to know us in the free pardon of sin. He wants to know our repentance. 
He wants to know that, that, that there's been that opportunity for forgiveness and that there's a change of life. That's the kind of, when he said, I never knew you, it doesn't mean that he don't know who people are, but he's never known them as their savior. That, that's, the, that's the wreck. And so here's Boaz. He looks this girl over and even though she's different than everybody else, he makes contact. And that's what, what, what do we call it? Uh, when the spirit of God begins to, to move on, on your heart, it's a conviction. conviction. Wow. All of a sudden. And you can see it, the prettiest picture of it is in uh, the eighth chapter of St. John. Uh, turn over there and go down about the fifth, it's probably about the fifth verse. The men are fixing to stone the girl and Jesus says, I'll tell you what we're going to do. He said, the law really does say if you catch somebody in adultery, in the very act of adultery, that you're supposed to stone them. That's the law of Moses. But he said, Here, here's the way we're going to do this. Uh, okay. Uh, look, look at verse number six. Let's see. This they said, tempting him. Okay, he, 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 he stoops down, he writes on the ground, look at verse 7. So when they continued asking him, Jesus is all squatted down right on the ground. He lifts himself up and he said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. If you know the story, you know the girl was not stoned. What's the matter? They came saying, and they were quoting the law of Moses, and that was a common thing. To stone the man and the woman, both of them, not, not just the woman. It's supposed to both be there. Okay, look at the next verse. He, he stoops, he's, and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. He, he does, he's not holding them back. Every one of them's got their rock ready. But now here's conviction. And they which heard it were, look, look, look right here. What happened to them? They were convicted by their own conscience and that's something that God put inside of every human and the word of God preached what it does because God is using his word it's not the man I don't care who's preaching it's not the man how, how talented or elaborate he is but it's the word of God anointed by the Holy Ghost that brings conviction by their own conscience they went out one by one do you think they went out doing like this Woo! Well, how do you think they went, baby? What'd you say? Oh, you know what conviction does? Oh, God, I know I'm wrong. Woo! Boy, I mean, it starts tearing a hole in your heart. We, we hadn't prayed today. We, I mean, all, all that stuff starts cycling through your mind. Plus, we're pointing the finger at somebody else, and we've got stuff in our own life. Oh. And so... Whenever Boaz made contact with her, you notice what she did? She fell on her face. That, that's what happens to us when we recognize that God is dealing with us, that he's got his eyes on us. You know, when Moses, whenever he's coming across there and he sees that, that, that bush burning, but it's not consumed, he heads out there to it. And the Lord said, and the, the scripture says, when the Lord saw that he was coming to the bush, he starts talking to him right there. And unless we want God, that will never happen. This girl wanted help. She wanted, she wanted God's help any way she could. She didn't know it was going to come through Boaz. She knows, she, she, you, can, you can recognize an owner when everybody's like, hey, <laughs> yeah, you can recognize that. And uh, she sees him and, and, and the servant is saying, hey, she asked to come. I told her it was okay to get what's left behind. And I mean, that girl's been working like crazy. She hadn't, she hadn't let her head up one time since then. So Boaz says, I'm going to go. I'm going to, because the next verse, he speaks to her. Uh, go, go, uh, yeah. go, go back to, uh, uh, yes, uh, verse 7. She said, I pray you let me glean. Okay, verse number eight. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, hearst thou not my daughter? So it goes from seeing her to talking to her. And that's important. I mean, just to say that I know there's a God out there, that's, that's wonderful. But when you know God has spoken to you, that's different. I mean, there was a million preachers called, but when the Lord got a hold to me and called me, I, I heard his voice myself in my own spirit. 
And I, I fought it like crazy. I want to do anything but preach. But you can't, you can't run. The, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. If there's a real call there, you can't run from it. And if you're not called to preach, you are called to be an ambassador for Christ. Every believer has a call on their life. And it's recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 18. He has given to all of us the ministry of reconciliation. And that means that everywhere you go, even though you don't preach behind a pulpit or maybe preach in the prison or in the jail, you still carry the word of God to your family, your daughter, your children, your grandchildren, your friends. And when they won't let you, uh, when they won't let you say something, you, who, who was it? it was it uh, that said when? Preach yeah. Who, 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 yes. Yeah, it, it was one of those old, old timers. He said, preach Christ, reach, preach Christ always. Use words when necessary. <laughs> so what's, what's he saying? That your life is going to be so seen that when people look at you, they recognize the love of God in you. If you go around with a frown on your face, kicking everything in the way and raising Cain, there ain't no God there. You're backslid. Yeah, there's not a meaner devil in the church house. He got whiskers plumb to the ground. A backslid, a simile God person. They're mean. They need to get saved. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> you get them saved, that's a, good, that's a good way. And so, man, what's happening here in this girl's life is so precious and it's likened to what God does for us. Uh, it says here, <coughs> In verse number 10, then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground. That, that's what happens, like, like Zeph said, when the convicting power of God come on these uppity up men of the church that's going to kill this woman. Man, it, it was like, this is, our, this, is our, this is the way we do. This is our deal. Wow. And, and the, here's what's so sad. They was willing to kill her to get to Jesus because the whole thing was a sham. She really had been caught in adultery, but they didn't even care about that. What they really cared about, they're trying to cross up Jesus and say, look, look at this man that says he loves everybody and he's killing women. Yeah. yeah, what kind of love is that? And so Jesus, he just poured the conviction on them. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, he, he, here's this girl you see. I mean, she falls on her face for God. Uh, I mean... For Boaz, but it was likened unto Christ, and that's what happens. That's what needs to happen in our walk with Him. I, I think it. I think it's so precious. Uh, the, the The lesson says Boaz took the initiative to speak to Ruth, seeking to help her. If you If you go to here, here's a wonderful passage in Second Timothy. Second uh, Timothy chapter two, verse number fifteen. Study to show. Thyself what? Approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What, what if Ruth had just been out there just kicking around, fooling around, hadn't picked up nothing the whole, the whole day? What's that going to say about her? Exactly. It's worthless. Yeah. But because she was a laborer, and the, and the servant there said, man, I mean, she hit the ground running. She's, she's going. Man, that, that stirs you up to see somebody that wants to do something. So that, that was a precious thing. Look, look, look at this passage of Scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16. Oh, yeah, her testimony, yes. No. She wasn't trying to improve. Nope. She was trying to do what she felt was right. And that testimony was observed by the leader of the service. Yes. And by, and by Boaz, yes. And so the, the neat thing is this. If, if Boaz spoke to her, we can know that Jesus speaks to us. And he speaks to us through through the word of God. So get your Bible out. Man, if you've got a problem, there's not a problem you could ever have that's not, that's not fixed right here. Love God, love people, 
and you can, I mean, you can get by it. You can fix it. It may take a little bit, but it will, the cure will come. So here's he's talking to us through Scripture. All Scripture, this is 2 Timothy 3, 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Man, so man, he's talking to her and in her heart, her heart just melted. And that, that's what happens whenever you're, the Lord is talking to you. It, you may just be in, in, in studying your, the scriptures or just having, having a devotion. And all of a sudden the Lord just starts speaking into your life. Man, when I was learning my scripture out of Psalms 81, it just, it just blessed my heart. Because if you read the before and the after, you know that Israel's going, they're going off the road into the ditch. And they're, 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 they've been serving all kinds of gods. And, and the Lord is trying to bring them back, zero them back in to here. Here is the, this is it. Randy, Randy gave me a gun several years ago. And the thing, he tried to, he tried to shoot a four by eight sheet of plywood. And the thing wouldn't even hit the, you aim it straight at it, it wouldn't even hit the plywood. And so he, kind, he finally figured out where it was uh, shooting. It was a pellet gun. And he got the thing and bent the barrel. <laughs> He bent the barrel down. It was shooting to the right and shooting up high. And he, he, he bent the barrel a little bit. I've never seen nobody do that. I thought, words, what about this? In a little bit, he put, a, put the scope on it, set it. And I mean, I, I killed a bunch. We had pigeons back here like crazy. They just tearing this up back here, just covering it up every night. And we, we got, them, got them put out. But that gun that was no good, it's like us. We need to be bent. And that's what the gospel does. Yeah, you can't even get to church once or twice in the whole year. Something's broke. It's time to, you need to be bent. I love it when you shout. <laughs> and so what, what does she do? She falls on her face because she's hearing the voice. She's hearing the voice of help. Somebody wants to help us. And up till now, there hadn't been no help. I mean, the they acknowledged them coming home to Bethlehem, but they wouldn't, it don't sound like nobody took them a sandwich. <laughs> I mean, they're hungry. Woo! One tortilla would have been worth five dollars. <laughs> what do you think? Hey, well, get that thing in there where they can't get it. Nobody else can get any of it. Woo! And so to hear the word of God and know that this inspired word, she knows when she hears that man's voice that I, somebody, he's going to help us. He's, he's speaking so kind. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's, it's going to be good. So, boy, that, that blessed her. When you hear the scripture inspired, you know God's going to speak to you. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse, uh, verses number 2 and 3, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of what? Of the word. Take the gospel into your life that ye may grow thereby. The more Bible you eat, the more you grow, the more you memorize, the longer it stays in your system. If you've got the scurvies, whatever you eat goes into the drought before you, it does any good in your body. That's, that's like you get out of church and say, what did he preach on? I, I guess it was up there on the, is that the platform? He preached on the platform. If that's all you got out of it, friends, you're not going to make it to heaven. There's got to be something that stops your mind long enough to say, I need to hear what God's saying to me. So let the word of God have a residence in your heart. He's talking about here. As newborn babes, as are the sincere milk of the word. That, that baby old Kevin's rocking back there. He, he likes to eat. I've never seen him eat, but I know he likes to eat because he's fat as a bear. It's wonderful. What should babies look like? A little skinny? No. That means he looks like he's doing good. <laughs> yeah. And so that, that's the way we should be. It's newborn babes. It's all the sense of the miracle of the word that we may grow thereby. And he's growing. H how much did he weigh, baby, when he was first born? Eight pounds. Eight pounds and ten ounces. And, and now? <laughs> He's nearly, nearly over double his size. <laughs> well, I, most of us have done pretty good, haven't we? <laughs> have you looked at any of your high school pictures? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, okay, we better get back to the Bible. I can tell it done hit a spot there. Okay, look at First Peter chapter one and verse number twenty-five. His word comes to who? Me. 
us. His word comes to us. He speaks to us. He wants to talk to us. But the word of the Lord endureth how long? Why wouldn't you want some of that in your system? Everything else we have is, look at us, is dying. But that word lives forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. What she's hearing from Boaz is like Jesus talking to us. Man, he's, he's, he's going to make, it's going to be good. Uh, this, this is uh, uh, 2 Peter 1 and 21. This scripture has always been a blessing to me. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. I don't, well, when I think about the Bible, that's one of the scriptures I just love. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's why this book is so transit. I mean, it's from every generation, from, from the beginning till right now, to have a Bible, we're, we're blessed people. I mean, they're under the front of the pickup or under the seat of the pickup on the dash and they leave them at church. And we got Bible. There's people overseas friends that's never had a Bible in their whole life. For the first time now, they're finding, I, I've, I've seen people that didn't know nothing about the Bible, but they get their phones out now and they can get the Bible on their phone, the whole Bible. You talk about an incredible thing. And people that's never had a page, they used to tear the page out and memorize it and give it to somebody else. They never had a Bible. For beta, but now electronically, they can just click and, and get the, whoa! Boy, you talk about a precious opportunity the, the, to hear the Word of God. Uh, here in uh, Psalms 119, verse number 105, just a little bit. Thank you for chasing these scriptures down for us. Thy word is what? A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Woo, man. So just like Boaz spoke to her, God speaks to us. He speaks to us. Would you sit with me? He speaks to us through his word. Don't wait for a word of knowledge. If the person that's given the word of knowledge is off just a little bit, they can throw your whole life out of, out of order. If, they, if somebody gives a word of knowledge and it don't line up with the Bible, take a grain of salt with it and hang on to what God said. If God, if God calls you, you will know it. He knows how to speak to you. And it may be through a song, it may be through the Word of God, and it may be a prophetic, a prophetic word from an individual. But I, I've heard some prophecies that was out, out of line. And so you just want to make sure that you stay right inside what the Bible's got to say. Stay there. And that's, that's, uh, that's what we want. The words lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Another thing that Boaz did, he promised to protect and to provide her. What did he say? Go, go back, I think it's like, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, stay here. But he said, I've, I've told the young men, have, in fact, he tells her, have not I told the young men, don't, don't bother you? And he tells them later on, said, whatever she picks up, leave her alone. Let her thrash it. Let her take her home with it. So he's telling them, we, we want to help her. He just, he's sending that out in front. We're going we're gonna to try to help them. Isn't that wonderful? Woo, man, good stuff. So, uh, Here's a scripture in Luke chapter 21 and verse number 18. Just as Boaz promised to protect and provide for Ruth, so the Lord protects and provides for us. The Lord promises to protect us. Wow. Where would we be without, without the protecting hand of God? You know, sometimes the flat tire might keep us from being run over on the interstate or something. I mean, who knows? Instead of cursing the flat, say, thank God you stopped me long enough. Yeah. Every once in a while, and I know, I know Brother Ross would probably... Uh, hear this from time to time, but every once in a while in the jail, uh, in fact, uh, it was the Sunday before last, the guy that just, that Christopher, uh, that just went to the pen, he, I said, I, what, what about your life? He said, he said, this jail, I said, I asked, I ask, have you ever been arrested? And you remember what he said? I was asking all the guys, have you ever been arrested? Because they had arrested John the Baptist and throwed him in jail and beheaded him. That's, that's pretty mean. And I asked, I asked him, I said, have y'all, any of y'all ever, ever been arrested? And every, all of them said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, that's how you get in jail. They arrest you. And, and uh, 
that that Christopher he said uh, not, not arrested what was it you remember I told you about it yes he said he'd been rescued I thought whoa you don't hear that very often but what happened the Lord stopped him long enough while he was in the jail that he found his way to Christ and he's on about his what fourth or fifth okay he, he's on his sixth or seventh a journey with, with off of the material, the discipleship material. He's filled it out, sent it back in, filled it out seven times. That's incredible. He said, he said, I have been rescued. And that guy was, he was a schizo. I mean, he, he had let his anger go so far that I mean, ever, ever other second, he'd just go nuts, just crazy. And now to watch what God has done in him. I haven't seen him, I haven't seen him in, in solitary confinement in a long time. You know why? Because God gives you your mind back. And, and I talked to him over and I said, you don't, have to, you don't have to do that. You don't have to give in to that because God's bigger than your anger. He said that you could have a controlled burn. Be angry, but don't sin. Don't let, that, don't let that filth come out of your mouth no more. You can stop it in the name of Jesus. And then he, he got on those uh, discipleship courses and now he's in the seventh and he said, I've been rescued. Woo! Yeah. And so what he's saying, the Lord stopped me long enough to rescue me. Woo! I love that. That's so precious. So uh, it, it's, just, uh, it's just wonderful. Here, here we are in Luke chapter 21, verse number 18. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. Now that's, that's speaking a lot. You know, even if you just comb your hair, some of it falls out. That reminds me of that scripture, what is it, 27 or 28 of Acts? Whenever Paul had seen the angel there on the ship, the winds of Eurachlodon, of Eurachlodon have carried them out. They're 19 days into it. And when all hope had failed, God meets them through the angel on the ship and said, you know what? I'm going to give you every so every person on this ship is going to make it to shore. The ship's not going to make it. Every person's going to make it. And not, this was, the, this was the prophecy, and not one hair of your head. Can you imagine 260 something people and not one hair stayed in the ocean? Some of them couldn't even swim. The Bible says the ones that couldn't swim, they grabbed them aboard and floated into shore. But God is a keeper of his word. Not one of them died. The, the storm was so vivid and so strong that it, they run the forepart of the ship into the sand and it stuck. And the, the, the storm was so bad it tore the back part of the ship off. Now I tell you what, that's rancor and all get out. And they, and they survived. Yeah! And guess what? All the hair made it. <laughs> that's powerful. Now, yeah, okay. <laughs> I got to shut up. Okay, here we are. Second Timothy chapter one, verse number seven. <laughs> There's, yeah, okay. <laughs> For God had not given us the spirit of what? Ah, when, when she falls over on her face, is it because she's afraid? Is she afraid of Boaz? No. There's such an honor in her spirit that I, I want to I wanna show you. Yeah, I'm grateful. I am grateful. God, not give a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Wow. I heard a Baptist preacher preaching one time. As we'd had a radio on one tractor out of all the tractors. The newest tractor had a radio. And you could turn it upside down. It, you didn't have no cab or nothing. But you could hear it. You could hear the radio. If you turned it up wide open, you could hear it while you was plowing. And I was listening to this Baptist preacher preach, and he said, here's the neat thing about the Lord. You come out, you go down the aisle, and you're saying, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell. And you meet Jesus at an altar, and you get up from that altar, and you walk back down the same aisle, and you say, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven. Wow! And so she kneels down, and it's like, I've been found. Yeah. Boy, that's a wonderful thing to, to, that people know. And like, like Nancy said, she wasn't out spouting off saying, I've done all of this. She, she was saying nothing. But her testimony couldn't be hid. And that's the way your Christian walk is. If you really live for God, you can't hide it. If there's no crook in your walk, people is going to see God in you. Now, if you're crooked, all you're doing is just making, you're making it hard for everybody else. Hold your head up for the Lord. Okay, uh, here, here's another scripture in Exodus 14, verse number 14. 
He's talking about the Lord promised to protect us. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord shall fight for you. Well, just sit down <laughs> and let the Lord. Who can whip the Lord? Can any husband or any wife or any outside force or any? No. Who can whip God? Nobody. Woo! The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Let God. And that, while I was praying for Brother Ross there at the council, that's what the Lord spoke to me. I said, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this. But I, I got to thinking about when I first started going to jail, man, they give me fits. Lock me, lock me in down there one time for several hours. I like not made it to church. They just locked me in, lit, went off and left the deal. Left me in a tank back there. <laughs> but you know what? After a while, the Lord, the Lord gave me peace and victory over it. Yeah, made it. And uh, God, God's bigger than the trouble. I mean, it's just, we're just, it's just humans. Yeah, all of us. And, and everybody's, you know, whenever, whenever God gets a hold of them, they change. <laughs> and some of the ones that was so hard at first, I mean, they, I made friends out of them after, after a while. And I, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I should believe, I should believe the, the Lord, but I get home and I'm talking to Brother Rodney. He said, well, he said, uh, since I talked to you last, something's happened. He said, uh, one of them is giving me fits. Is he leaving? <laughs> Wow! Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo, brother! So, what does it say? The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. God's protection. That's a promise from the Lord. Here, here's a wonderful passage in 2 Chronicles 16 and verse number 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to shew himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is where? Is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. And so <clears throat> he's talking, he's talking to these boys, said, if you keep your heart straight, uh, it'd be good. But when you do foolish, what happens? Trouble comes. He can't protect you then. So the thing, the thing that saves uh, or that, that's her salvation is her confidence in God and the Lord sent help for her. Here, here's a scripture in uh, Psalms 34, verse number seven. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that do what? That fear him. And he delivereth them. Oh, I love that. Look at one more scripture here, 125, Psalms 125 and verse number two. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. I love that. Back in, uh, go, go back, I think it's like the, the seventh or eighth verse of, of our text. Or he's, he's talking to Ruth and it may be, okay, go down one more. It, it's where he said, have not, I, have not I commanded the young men? Uh, oh, it's, it's number nine, okay. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap and go thou after them. I love this. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? I mean, he's, this is done clear. <laughs> Isn't that good? That's what the Lord said. He, he said, that a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thy dwelling. That's the Lord we're serving, man. Uh, I mean, when we, when we tried to buy this property, they, they, you can't believe the community said that, I mean, one of the, one of the teachers from the, the college that knew my mother-in-law called her and said, please tell Danny and Connie to retract the prophecy that they're going to get that property because they'll never live long enough for Lighthouse Assembly of God to be on the deed to that property. And they were right, had it not been for God. But the miracle working power of God, uh, guess what? We own the property, completely paid for. Can you shout hallelujah? You know why? Because the Lord run interference for us. Woo! <laughs> and what they didn't know is that we had prayed and fasted and God said, was going to get it. And friends, he can't lie. He's the yay and the amen. Woo! That gives hope, doesn't it? So, yeah. 
going to be okay, going to be good for you. I've charged the young men. They shall not touch thee. Don't you love it? We, we're going to stop right there, but don't you love it when the Lord, he cast them demons out and said, don't you come back in here. Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's powerful. That's our Jesus. And that's why there's deliverance. Not only does he save and heal, he delivers. I don't care what kind of demon's been working on you, whether it's, uh, you know, you, you, you feel down all the time or, or uh, you're, you're real uh, impatient or whatever. Whatever the devil's bringing into your life. Bigger than him is Jesus Christ. Woo! And he uh, stops all the foolishness and says, devil, you get out of here and don't you come back. <laughs> I love it, don't you? It's so precious. Amen. Let's stand together.